I want you to understand that it's only God that can help us. Anywhere you find yourself, anywhere you go to, any man of God you see, remind yourself unconsciously that it's only God that can do what? That can help. Let's read the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 6, starting from verse 26. You know the story. When Solomon dedicated the temple of God, he prayed some kind of prayers, very powerful and impactful prayers. And God answered those prayers. But let's look at the content of the prayers he prayed. Look, this life ministry may be a very blessed place, but it still need God's consent to get the blessing. It's not all about if that place is blessed, anointed or whatever. It's what is your relationship with God? Why would God help you? God can never validate you without him being sure of you. Through test. Real life test. Because many of us are always so good. We love God. We love God when everything is going well. But when things turn around, we forget that same God. Church, our problem today is that we feel that we shouldn't have problems. How will you be good, be strong, learn more, be closer to God with that problem? You may say, I will still be. You cannot. You know what I'm saying? You can never. The main ingredient amongst things that takes you to God is trouble. The main ingredient of things that takes you to God is what? Is trouble. Number one, is trouble. I have never seen anybody God talks to in his pleasure. He will never talk to you in your pleasure. You will not hear God. I have never seen anybody God want to talk to that person, want to get that person's attention, and that person is... He would never do that. Are you following me? Every time you want to have your attention, it takes pleasure away from you. You will hear him that time. Because when you are happy, you listen to music. When you are sad, you listen to the lyrics. There are some songs you have heard for a very long time. But the day you are sad, you now sit down and listen to the lyrics of that song. It makes sense to you. That's how God is. Are you following me? When you are happy, you will not hear God. You don't say, oh. When you are sad, you will be the one to go and ask him, Father, what do I do? Say, hey, I was waiting for you. Come. And when he's done, he will now put you back again. So, trouble is not your enemy. It is a leverage for you to have access to God. Are you together? Yes, trouble is not your enemy. It is a leverage for you to do what? Have access to God. Face it. Tell your neighbor, face it. Yes. The earlier you face your trouble, the sooner you also overcome that trouble. But if you run away from it, you find out that even in the next 20 years, you still need to fight that. They say we have two meanings for fear. F-E-A-R. Forget everything and run. Face everything and rise. Tell your neighbor, fear means two things. Forget everything and run. Face everything and rise. So the decision is yours. Because what you cannot face, you cannot conquer. Until you face that thing, you cannot do what? Conquer. You can't conquer it. You want to be a victor? You must have battles to fight. You want to be a champion? There must be a race for you to win. I mean victory, championship, it's not gotten. They are all in. You earn them. What have you done to earn what you are asking God for? Nothing. Your faith, this should be in your mind by now. Your faith will always be challenged in a real situation. Not an assumption. Your faith will always be challenged in a real situation. That's the only way God can know if you are truly what you confess you are. Father, in sickness and in health, 
Wait for the test. Though. Don't be too quick to judge. One day, a servant of God, a chorister, a worker, a de something will just happen. I just came back from church. And I'm paralyzed. And I'm this. You know what God is waiting for? He want to hear what you will say after them. I wish I didn't even go to that church. You have failed that test. Even when you recover, you will remain at that position. You can't leave that place. Are you hearing me? Because it's not to destroy you. Tests are not meant to destroy you. They are meant to elevate you. Every time you fail tests, you repeat. The only thing that is meant to destroy you is temptation. Your faith must be tested in a real situation. So when you know that you are a child of God and things are happening funny, be careful. It's a moment of test. Because even when that thing is gone and you fail the test, you will repeat that class. But if you pass the test and you are elevated, you have conquered that level, you have conquered that territory, you have conquered that atmosphere and that face of your life. You cannot, you cannot see anything like that in your life again. If the same thing that happened to you in 2020 is still happening to you in 2023, Check well. You didn't pass that test in 2020. That's why it's still happening. Until you pass it, it will not stop coming. And no matter how you pray, no matter how you pray and fast and do whatever, God will never give you double promotion. God can never double. God can never double promote anybody. If you have 20 courses to take before you get to the peak of your life, you must you must take the 20 courses one after the other. If you let's score 100 over 100 in number 5, you will still take number 6. Why? Every of those courses serves a purpose. Yes. So you will not jump. If you jump it, you will miss that mark. Because I used to tell you, this way God will put you and push on you in life that if you fall, you will mock God. So it will prepare you, cook you well, yeah, now, before taking you up there. Because you get to a level in your life, you don't give excuses. You don't say no. Only thing you say is what? Yes. Yes, sir. Let's go. It must train you now for you to do that. What do I mean? You can't have anything to do with God if you don't have a genuine heart of repentance to follow God. When the heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee. Yet, if they pray toward this place, that is the house Solomon built, and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou dost afflict them, then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sin of thy servant and of thy people Israel. When thou hast taught them the good way, wherein they should walk, and stand upon the land which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance. Hold on, please. If there be dull in the land, if there be pestilence, if there will be blasting of mildew, locusts, or caterpillars, if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, Whatever saw or whatever sickness there will be. Now, pay attention to this. Then, what prayer or what supplication ever shall be made of any man or of all the people in Israel when everyone shall know his own soul and his own grave and shall spread forth his hands in this house? Have you seen it here? If this is even the Old Testament, it's pride for you to think that no, God has uh, yeah, no. You must acknowledge every time you mess up. Acknowledge that you have messed up. That's the only way you can be forgiven. Are you hear me? The only way you can be pardoned is when you acknowledge that that thing you have done is what is wrong. It shows that you are sorry. If you don't acknowledge it, it's pride. And it's blasphemy. That's you feel that you can just come and do anything and go with it. That the next verse. Next verse, please. He 
Did ye thou from heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and render unto every man according to according to according unto all his ways? Whose heart thou knowest, for thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men. Move on. That they may fear thee to walk in thy ways, so long as they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Praise the Lord. If you go back and read the whole chapter and read the following chapter, chapter 7, where God responded, God responded exactly what Solomon said. If these people sin and they come wholeheartedly before me and say, I'm sorry, I will do what? I will forgive them and hear them. That is the only way if they come into this house that I will bless them. That means if they don't do that, even if they come into that your house you have built, I will not help them. If they don't confess their sin all Listen, church. As I used to say, it will be very easy for you to be blessed when you see and approach a man of God. If you have reconciled yourself with God already. Before Saul could meet Samuel, God has told Samuel that Saul is coming. There was a pre plan. And the woman saw Saul, Sam, Samuel saw Saul. He said, That is the man I told you about. I mean, if you have appeared before God and reconciled yourself before God, before you could come here and meet me, God might have told me, Somebody is coming. Do this and do that, and I will hear. Hallelujah. Are you following me? So you don't appear before a man of God because you feel that man of God is anointed. The anointing, the root of that anointing is in who? God. God. Ah, that man can turn this thing upside down. Who does that? God. It's God that does that through the man. The man cannot do it. We have no power of our own. So first of all, reconcile yourself with who? Once you reconcile yourself with God, the race is dark. You will struggle. Many people have appeared before great, main, powerful people of God. But at times it's like, you don't really get answers to what you want. Do you know why? You need to reconcile yourself with him. 